how life originated on Earth. They, they don't really know how it originated elsewhere. Contemporary scientific thinking cautiously asserts that life arrives on Earth when certain chemical substances crash into the surface aboard a stray comet early in our planet's history. What we are trying to find out in the meteorites is to see whether there are any of these molecules related to life. There are certain molecules like the amino acids which may be described as the building blocks of life. Directed panspermia, another scientific theory, suggests that life on Earth is seeded by a race of beings from outside the planet, not by chance, but as the deliberate activity of an otherworldly society. The Bible suggests that the creation of humankind comes at the end of a long list. All the fishes of the sea, and all the fowl that fly the skies, and all the animals that fill the earth, and all the creeping things that crawl upon the earth, it was only then that Elohim created the Adam. In the last few pages of the story of creation, the Sumerians point to the Anunnaki as the creators of mankind, our own benefactors of life. According to Sumerian text, the Anunnaki, in advance of landing 445,000 years ago, sent androids to scout the Earth. 150,000 years later, the Anunnaki themselves arrive and create humankind. How was Adam created? According to the Sumerians, it was by genetic engineering, fertilization in vitro, in a glass tube, as depicted in this cylinder seal rendering. Adam was the first test tube baby. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible reads, Let us make the Adam in our image and likeness. But why? Sumerian documentation suggests the Anunnaki create humanity to assist in mining African gold that they need to save the dwindling atmosphere of their home planet, Nibiru. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the, the three great Western traditions, religious traditions, are all founded on the idea of there's, that there's something special about human beings. We didn't arrive here accidentally, so we're not just some uh, consequence of billions of years of pointless uh, accidental permutations of life forms. No, we were created in the image of God the creation really is about the process of our salvation. Now, what, what if it were the case that there were creatures both technologically more advanced than us, older than us in terms of their civilization, and maybe even more intelligent than us, and more spiritually advanced, if we could imagine that, then would this cause the creation story to collapse and, and leaving, you know, literally billions of people on the planet totally confused about the meaning of life. The Bible relates an incident of mankind overstepping the bounds of the Anunnaki when the Babylonians attempt to reach the gods by building an enormous launch pad in the archetypal story of the Great Tower of Babel. What is the target of their efforts? According to Zechariah Sitchin, it is our neighboring planet Mars, home of the Anunnaki's way station en route to Earth. The Sumerian tablets refer to the station planet Mars as the traveler's ship. I've taken it to mean that it was at Mars that the Anunnaki from Nibiru transferred to smaller spacecraft to reach Earth orbiting stations. Not once every 3600 years, but on a more frequent schedule. Mesopotamian archives identify the 12 members of our solar system with specific symbols. Some, like Mars, Earth, and Venus, are indicated numerically on this ancient stella. We see the sun with its many rays. We see another four depicted standing on their cult animals, but really it's a symbolism connected with the zodiac. We see the moon and we see the earth symbolized by the seven dots which indicated the position of the earth from the outer limits of the solar system counting or coming in inwards by somebody flying into from outer space. The seven dots of earth with its crescent moon, 
and the six-pointed star of Mars are revealing clues in this 4,500-year-old Sumerian depiction. Two figures stand on either side of a craft. Some researchers believe that Mars was habitable as little as 10,000 years ago. A tenth planet, a mysterious species with the technology to genetically engineer humankind. A few years ago, most of us would have laughed at these ideas, but after the cloning of Dolly the sheep and some of the breakthroughs in genetic engineering, these concepts begin to sound more plausible. When we come back, we'll look at some photographic evidence that raises more serious questions about what the mysterious Anunnaki may have left behind. When the United States launches the Mariner and Viking spacecraft to explore Mars in the 60s and 70s, enigmatic structures resembling those on Earth are photographed. This is a feature on Mars that NASA nicknames the Inca City. Here we see it compared with Saxahuma on Peru. These are lines on the Mars surface. These are the Nazca lines in Peru. I feel that what has been discovered so far is very suggestive of intelligent layout, uh, but it would be irresponsible of me to say, I have proof. What I have is evidence which makes it appear as though it's been designed by some kind of intelligent thinking process, which is pr probably even more advanced than our current in some ways. I was especially intrigued by independent researchers' suggestions in their reports that the orientation of the face and adjoining pyramid indicated they were built in alignment with sunrise at solstice time on Mars about 450,000 years ago. Could it be that a civilization capable of space travel almost half a million years ago visited this part of the solar system leaving behind monuments on Earth and Mars? The only beings mentioned by name are the Anunnaki. The only evidence supporting such a theory is evidence of visits by the Anunnaki. We have seen uh, societies on Earth that have been demolished by um, cultural cross-representation, if you like. Meeting a more advanced culture has had a, a severe impact on, on, on an existing culture. But I think we, we're intelligent enough to be prepared for that. Our civilization is technologically able to venture out into deep space on scientific quests of discovery. Can anyone then deny the possibility that members from a technologically more advanced world may have visited our solar system thousands of years ago? Thanks to the work of Zechariah Sechen and others like him, we know more than we ever have about ancient cultures and the life that came before. this Genesis revisited? Did the Sumerians in their ancient tablets reveal that we're only now catching up with ancient knowledge? Do the discoveries making headlines today originate with our ancient ancestors? Was this ancient knowledge given to the people of Sumeria by those distant explorers from the mysterious 10th planet, Nibiru, the Anunnaki? The final answers may lay buried in those yet to be uncovered volumes of the Phenomenon Archives. Thank you.